Thank you, Chair. I just want to indicate that uh, some of the portfolio committee members cannot hear anything. If the technical staff can also make sure that other members uh, can also hear the presentation or be part of the meeting because they can't hear anything. Thank you, Chair. Um, can I please suggest that the people who are not talking today please switch their cameras off? Um, the reason being is that the camera will slow down the internet connection and those people who don't have really good or fast internet um, will keep cutting off from the call. So if you aren't talking, please switch your camera off. Sure, do I have green light from your side? Yes, DG. Um, before you, before you just start, can we all of us switch our cameras off uh, and allow DG? DG, you've got thirty minutes, Max. I I know you, my DG. Okay. Uh, what I will try and do. Uh, let me also take my own camera off. Uh, uh, no, DG, yours must be on. Oh, it must be on. You are live. You are live. Your camera must be on. Uh, the presentation is off. Uh, can you see the presentation? Yes, the presentation is on. And okay. I see you as well. So can you start? So oh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, as the correctly indicated, let me acknowledge the honourable chair and the honourable members, uh, and the honourable deputy minister. As the uh, deputy minister correctly indicated, this plan has been subjected to a, an extensive consultation process. And somebody was saying we've never consulted uh, in the history of the department like uh, we've done in the past few days. And the last consultation meeting uh, or meetings were even yesterday. And part of the reason why uh, the minister could not uh, address uh, the media and the public about the date of the reopening of schools on Monday is because a special request was made. Uh, for that to and the intention of of the minister is then to announce to the public either tomorrow or Friday. Uh, that's the only reason, but decisions taken by CM on Sunday uh, still remain. Chair, this is the plan. This is the outline of the plan. Uh, it covers uh, these sections that are indicated here, the purpose, introduction, international experience, uh, the size and shape of the sector, uh, lockdown regulations, and then the actual pillar of the sector plan, and the South African risk-adjusted strategy, and then we'll... And by the way, Chair, uh, um, I'm going to try and do two presentations in one. When uh, we'll be responding to answers, uh, Mrs. Woods to do the the second part of the presentation because you've given us only 30 minutes i will try and keep to that uh, so um she'll be very helpful in terms of providing more info uh, than the one that i would have presented well in in terms of the introduction we all know from the medical expert uh, the science be behind the development of uh, this, this disease that from who, uh, where the first million cases of COVID-19 um, uh, were found. And then we also know uh, to, uh, uh, and eventually the National Coronavirus Command structure taking the decision to declare a state of national disaster. Uh, 
the uh, uh, and then also moved uh, to regulations which were to limit the movement uh, of people in South Africa for the purpose of the the spread of the virus. As we now know from Professor Karim that the flames that we see uh, and the trees or the bush, the flame represent uh, uh, the virus and then the, the trees or the bush represent uh, the citizens. And uh, we know that the law uh, was really intended to to, and the, the medical practitioners, uh, the screening, testing, and, and tracing. Um, so that's that. And as the president said, um, we couldn't just uh, remain with a lockdown. The lockdown is important, using the spread of the virus. But as we all, all know, it stops economic activity. So you have a choice of either dying from, from the virus or if you continue with the lockdown because it remains a blunt object, then you might actually die of uh, uh, poverty and hunger. And, and that's why we're even talking about the gradual lifting of the lockdown. What is the international experience saying, Chair? Now, some of our critics are saying, why are we looking this far? Why should we talk about Taiwan? Why should we talk about Denmark? Why should we talk about Sweden and uh, these other countries? That, yeah, the simple logic is that these countries have gone through what we are starting to go through. And it's um, the only place where the experience the yeah. Uh, now so, what is so, this now? <laughs> it's because people have not muted uh, their mics and therefore it brings the echo. As I speak, then the echo uh, 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 comes back. So in terms of international experience, Chair, although very little is known, especially when it comes to schooling and COVID-19, but very interesting information is beginning to emerge. Um, as we can see, uh, Taiwan closed schools only for two weeks, and after that, um, social distancing, temperature screening, um, as we would have seen um, in some of the information that has been running even in the social media. And then in terms of China, also China closed their schools from 20th of January uh, to the 6th of February. And therefore, um, um, schools had to be COVID-19 uh, compliant. Um, Denmark, a very interesting one. Uh, Denmark opened ECD centers and primary schools to grade five uh, with no face masks, no COVID-19 essentials there in Denmark, uh, almost similar to Sweden. Uh, Sweden. Uh, Sweden never closed schools at all. And if you look at the spread of the the virus is not, uh, um, you know, higher than in any of the countries that even came with other measures, including closing schools and so on. Uh, Singapore, uh, Singapore closed school, um, in fact, did not close schools. And then when they experienced the spike, uh, then closed schools. Yes, um, and some ECD centers uh, remained open. Uh, so, as I said, uh, the, there's very interesting uh, information that is coming up. There's a journal called Lancet, which has also published some information about uh, COVID-19 and school. The UNESCO, the World Health Organization, has also gathered some information around COVID-19 and uh, and schooling and what is interesting is that uh, especially in the uk um, there's information that from the increase of the virus by about 60 percent schooling would have contributed only uh, about three uh, percent and if you look at even countries like france 
and, and many others, including Sweden and others, uh, the, 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 the contribution that schooling makes um, in terms of the, the, the spread of the virus, it's almost insignificant. Now, this is who we are, um, and the reason why we are factoring this in is that in our planning, we need to take into account the magnitude of the sector so that uh, whatever interventions that we are bringing in take into account uh, the number of learners that we have, the number of educators that we have, and the number of schools that we have, both public All right, it seems that we lost some audio with regards to this feed. It's a briefing by the Department of Education to Parliament. Uh, it seems that we have audio back. Let's, let's resume. Oh, it looks, it, it seems that it's just disappeared again. These are some of the challenges uh, that you go through when holding uh, briefings or holding meetings, discussions uh, virtually, online. So these are some of the challenges, the technical challenges that you have to deal with. But basically, we're talking about, today talking about the risks involved, uh, talking about the need for a gradual opening uh, as well. We understand the audio is back. Let's hope it's... Uh, secure let's 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 listen in uh, which even indicate that in your double combination desks learners should not be more than uh, uh, two in a double combination the other things i think they are well, well known to all of us chair Uh, the next slide is really to reflect on implications for infrastructure and, and school furniture. And uh, what we are planning for is that uh, classrooms, staff rooms be, be sanitized. Um, uh, all must be socialized around uh, uh, sanitizing hands on entering and leaving rooms and limit the movement uh, between classes and within playgrounds and also getting learners, uh, um, uh, you know, being together in groups that are not more than five and so on. And the same applies to, to learner transport. And the point that we want to emphasize here, Chair, is that government will be responsible for learner transport provided by government and transport provided for uh, by parents, which is private arrangement. Um, the the parents will have to see that uh, uh, the COVID-19 uh, requirements are at year two and will be working with the Department of Transport also to, to, to ensure uh, enforcement in, term, in terms of COVID-19 requirements. These are uh, schools that require uh, provision of water and sanitation urgently. We've given a geospatial um, um, a reflection of that, uh, showing all the nine provinces. The only province that, that seems to be clear there is the Western Cape, as we can see. And these slides actually uh, provide us more information on that. KZN leading, and then followed by Eastern Cape, Limpopo, and then Pumalanga, and the rest of the other provinces. The number of schools, 3,475 of those schools that require water supply. And the problem is delineated into those that require um, bowls, 1,000 of them, and those that require water tanks, pipes, and uh, taps, 2,500. Uh, we are working with the Department of Water and Sanitation. The team met with them yesterday. Um, they indicated to us 
that they were able to deliver water tanks, over 7,000 of them, in a period of uh, uh, two weeks. And therefore, half of that they could even deliver in a week's time if uh, we contracting them through rainwater. So that's the arrangement that we have made with the Department of Water and Sanitation as well as rainwater as the implementing agent. As I said, the CFO, the um, uh, branch head, Mr. Van der Westhuizen, and his team met with the implementing agent and some senior officials from water and sanitation yesterday to finalize arrangements. Uh, we'll be getting the report, uh, the DG of water and sanitation and myself later, later today, Chair. Basic sanitation and hygiene package, uh, working with the Department of uh, Health um, and the National Treasury, the Office of the Chief Procurement Officer, the list of uh, COVID essentials for schools and offices uh, have been delineated. And for instance, we are talking about cleaning and disinfection materials, the, PP, the PPs, uh, in other words, personal protizer, washing soaps, gloves, uh, cloth masks, and thermometers. Uh, we have uh, procured those. We've been meeting with provinces this morning. We met with the Northwest. It, it is the third meeting that we meeting with provinces one-on-one -on -one to check their state of readiness in the procurement uh, of all the COVID-19 essentials. We'll be providing every learner with two cloth masks um, for quintile one up to quintile four schools. Uh, for a start, but going forward, uh, we'll only be covering for quintal one up to three. Uh, teachers will be provided also with masks, uh, masks that are in keeping with affording teachers to be able to teach. Learners with special education needs, the deaf learners will need to sign in the course of uh, learning and teaching, uh, will be provided with different masks, masks that are Uh, clear uh, so that to sign minimum of two thermometers that uh, the temperature will be taken from front at a registry day and whenever you leave the school premises when you come back we'll have to take your temperature and if the temperature is higher than what is required and of course working with the department of health will be training those who will be taking um, the chair from all the way into school uh, be taken through the, the requisite protocol and um, will we'll, we'll then be expected to do this on a daily basis and we have also provided guidelines of uh, what people should follow in in carrying this out this slide is about what i have just uh, spoken about uh, 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 procurement on COVID-19 essentials, uh, which has been a centralized process through the Office of the Chief Procurement Officer. Uh, we've been working with National Treasury and provinces to make sure that they procured. All provinces have placed orders of COVID-19 essentials. At North indicated this morning that they've received of some. They're still waiting for some uh, consignments uh, to be delivered. So all nine provinces have placed their orders. I can confirm that. Screening, as I said, screening will be done uh, regularly in the morning when uh, everyone arrives in the institution or the office, in our offices. You can, as you can see, I'm in the office. We've started doing this. Immediately the president announced the lockdown uh, coming into our building, you have to be screened, and uh, you can only get in if you are cleared from, from screening. And if the temperature is higher than what is expected, you'll be then put in an isolation room and then be referred to health practitioners who will do further examination to determine whether you need to be tested or not. Standard operation procedures. This is a very instrument that provides details on step-by-step of what should be done um, in case of any incident or any activities that are related to uh, dealing with COVID-19 matters. 
and um, uh, the uh, standard operation procedure has been uh, uh, evolving um, over time. Uh, provinces have made other stakeholders like the Association of School Governing Body uh, to make comments uh, to us strengthen so that when we reopen schools, uh, this will be a document that will provide clear direction on what should be happening uh, uh, every step of the way. The orientation and training guidelines, we've, we've developed this as well. Provinces have started already to develop their own training manuals. Some of them have started with virtual training. Uh, as you know that we've got 144 teacher centers across the country, and some of those centers are more prevalent in some provinces than others. So provinces are using them to, to carry out uh, virtual training. This is the Eastern Cape, where every teacher and every uh, official has got a laptop. Um, the virtual training happens in the comfort of where they might be, whether it's in their homes or their offices. So virtual training is happening. We're providing even other materials which will be crucial to the orientation of of learners, the orientation of teachers and non-teaching staff. This is the draft uh, amended school calendar, de depending on what the minister will announce and uh, based on the decision of CEM on Sunday, these dates are bound uh, to change, uh, but this is what uh, we, we had uh, planned for. We were short of about nine days, but if the announcement is such that we'd still start schooling in in May if we, because the other scenario where we had uh, nine, nine days short of the full calendar year was when we were going to start schooling in July. Uh, people forget when they say that we've lost time that um, we went on early recess uh, just before going on school holidays and uh, the winter school holidays are your longest up to even th three to four weeks and we're going to cut them to help any early school closure that we need to compensate for from the winter vacation days as well as the spring vacation days. The winter vacation is going to be shortened to a week and then the spring will only be one day linked to a weekend which will be a long weekend. And uh, the details are provided underneath the curriculum recovery. These are principles guiding the, the recovery of the curriculum. And here I can say that uh, in many ways, many can attest to the fact that we've been able to do this. In one is a case in point, uh, Oliphant's work in the Northern Cape is another one. Mirafong in Caltonville is a, another one. You've got many of such examples all over the country, particularly for grade 12 learners, where we have a history of some of the measures that we employed where we're able to even recover the curriculum. So I'll move quickly. So the, the philosophy underpinning curriculum recovery is reorganization and trimming of the curriculum, but making sure that you secure the fundamentals. The annual teaching plans will be amended to be in line. As I said, your foundational skills must be secured. But uh, content in terms of life orientation and life skills will also be rearranged uh, to embed in it or to contain it um, uh, awareness and knowledge about COVID-19 as well as personalized self-study skills, emotional and psychological. But we are also saying every subject and should contribute at least five minutes to watching awareness about COVID-19 so that it will help to enhance uh, behavior change among our young people. They should not only hear this during orientation, they must hear it uh, during the day. Just like many years ago when we started about bringing awareness about HIV and AIDS, which is now continuing still in life skills and life orientation, we have to do the same about COVID-19. This is how the uh, initial scenario about the facing in was to happen. And um, the, the aim was that we didn't cover learners with special education needs. 
Chair, you can now see the first column is about public school, public ordinary schools, and your your uh, public uh, special, and also have schools of skill, and then you've got uh, another uh, category of your special schools uh, for learners with severe and intellectual disabilities, and then you've got your special care centers, which are under social development, and we're indicating the facing in there. As part of managing the risk chair, we are saying we start with grade 12 and grade 7, which are your exit grades. These are your older learners who are aware, much more matured, who will have help to requisite infrastructure in primary schools, in high schools. For younger learners, when they come in, they help to orientate them in the new way of uh, of schooling. And and we're saying you start with grade 12 and grade 7, and then you have uh, two weeks in between, hopefully to get the country also to move to alert level number 3 or even number 2 in the course of time. But these are your least number of learners, in the, and that's why we even choose them, because it helps to limit the risk also in terms of the number of learners that schools will have to deal with. Uh, but also I needed to indicate that our plan is to make sure that before even learning, the school management team, which would include the principal, will arrive first. And then after that, teachers will come in, and then learners will come right at the end. The SG will prepare for receiving COVID-19 essential for helping with the marking in the school for social distancing. And when the teachers come, they start with preparation before learners arrive. And then when learners arrive, they would find teachers and the SMT ready to receive them, to socialize them into the new way of schooling. So that is the facing in the implications for exams. Exams which were supposed to be written in May, June, have now been moved to November. It has increased the number phenomenally from about uh, 500, 600,000 to almost double that number, which we'll see in, uh, in the number of marking centers, um, uh, increase the number of uh, even exams, and uh, provinces have started to prepare for this. And I say that uh, uh, with these changes, um, the exam might be uh, finished around the first or the second week of December. Might might take about two to three weeks, and therefore the release of the results might be third week of January 2021 towards the end of January. And of course, as I said, the uh, uh, um, uh, May June uh, have been. There won't be May June exams, but in terms of the NS NSC, we combine we combining them with the November December exams. But the usual June exam will not happen, but we'll use that for teaching. And therefore, preparatory exams in September will still happen. And as I indicated, the timetable will also be affected. These are the numbers, Chair. 1.1 million that we've never handled. It's unprecedented. That's a combination of June uh, candidates plus the November uh, candidates will be joining the November, December exam. Psychosocial support we've done and uh, we've looked at different levels of our system but we've also looked at the epicenters the president talked about the six metros but we are also saying provinces that do not have metros there are epicenters in those provinces restrictions are, are going to vary uh, from the risk adjusted plan that has already been announced um, so the restrictions would vary from national to provincial district up to local and therefore, we're getting ready to make sure that whatever eventuality up to school level and district level school-based teams, district-based team to deal with trauma uh, emotionally and psychologically, will be working with NGOs. Live Life is one which is in the education space, working with uh, universities, uh, uh, but also with civil society broadly, faith-based organization to deal with incidents of, of uh, uh, emotional and psychological. QLTC remains very important to drive the back-to-school campaign. As 
as we know, we've seen it in other countries that we referred to earlier on. Parents were very reluctant to release their children to go back to school. Uh, anxiety and fear, uh, which is understandable, a uh, chair would have to prove that schools are indeed safe. And I must say that any school that, that does not uh, meet the requirements will be ticking boxes of the requirements uh, um, that are about uh, and school bodies and the school management team will be part of that. Such schools will not, not be allowed to form part of schools that will be reopening. In other words, when you don't meet the requirements that are indicated on the list, that a team of lawyers uh, in the basic education sector is busy working out because we know that if we do not put reasonable measures in place to make sure that schools are safe, we will be litigated left, right, and center. We, we know we've been uh, litigated on many areas, so we're making sure that we don't leave anything uh, uh, to chance here. This is our communication strategy. Strategy. One of the major issues that we'll have to deal with is fake news, uh, which has been quite rampant in the social media uh, about many things. So uh, our communication team, I met with them. I, I addressed them on these matters, and I believe that uh, collectively, uh, nine plus one, we are ready to, to drive uh, the message of what government is intending to do and uh, also to deal uh, with challenges of, of fake news. Uh, the, the landscape of the sector is... ...changed... Uh, ...changed forever. And then Therefore, we're also looking at investing quite heavily uh, in teaching and learning, accelerate uh, what the president said about uh, devices to learners, educators, uh, and, and officials, but also making sure that we change our business processes. For Fortunately, uh, DBE run the uh, um, business chain. Look at that, and we have established seven that will drive matters relating, uh, um, including ICT. One of the committees is looking at ICT, the e-governance and and e-learning. And these are some. These are what we call the non-negotiables. In other words, the basic uh, necessities uh, that are to be in place for reopening to. Uh, Sanitation and hygiene package, water and sanitation about what we're doing, cleaners, and in this case, it's not ordinary cleaning, it's all medical terms, biological, with a view of making sure that conditions do not themselves to the spread. Also, I've referred to screening. There will be screeners in every school. And we encourage parents also to acquire um, thermometers and to even screen uh, their children, um, you know, in their respective homes and so on, so that if the temperature of your uh, is just uh, um, uh, above, uh, for instance, uh, uh, seven, then then you should consider uh, not to release the child to go to school, but uh, refer the child to a medical practitioner. Adi Additional things to deal with overcrowd, and uh, we have to make sure that we bring our classrooms uh, to at least uh, 40 and below. And some schools will be able to meet that, but we also know that some of our classrooms are overcrowded. We've been working with provinces; they've ordered even moms. Not was telling us this morning that they've ordered 400 uh, of these mobile classrooms, which would which would be delivered. And we are also seeing incubation program for weaker and progress learners who might have regressed during this period of the lockdown. We need to provide special support to them to make sure that they succeed. The risk adjusted strategy chair, um, we know about it, uh, five level uh, from the 1st of May will be on level four. 
And our intention is to contribute to making sure that uh, progressively the country moves up. Ideally, we'd like to see the country and ourselves to level one. But as I said, the medical evidence and the uh, uh, research that has been done by UNESCO, including WHO, indicates that um, the contribution that schooling makes to the spread of the virus is, is very, very small and it's almost insignificant. And, and the danger that you might have, uh, rather in terms of schooling, is the possibility of learners being infected by adults who happens to be teachers. And taking that into account, we don't leave anything to chance. And that's why we are saying we are going to put all reasonable measures in place, including the provision of all these COVID essentials that I've referred to. This slides uh, just explain the significance of each of the levels. And uh, this is the categorization of different services, including government services uh, that are permitted to operate. Uh, once the lockdown is uh, gradually lifted. And this one is just reminding us that there will be restrictions. Strict uh, to local aid uh, submissions for amendations coming from outside the country must be taken through the requisite protocols, but we will need those teachers to teach and there will be some will be commuting from one province to the other, some will be uh, commuting from one district to the other, some from one local municipality to the other. I've seen already some amendments that will find expression uh, to the regulations that are going to be considered today by the NCCC. These are the preconditions for resuming activity, uh, protection of vulnerable learners, teachers and non-teaching staff, safe transport for learners and te for teachers and non-teaching the screen of learners teachers and non-teaching staff day they leave school premises they have to be subjected to screening prevention of the spread of uh, the uh, of the virus cleaning of surfaces and shared equipment uh, good ventilation and managing um, uh, sick learners as well as teaching staff and non-teaching staff these are some of the rules that we are expected to observe. Uh, learners with pre-medical conditions, such as um, you know asthma, uh, diabetes, and others, our communication has been advised already that once the minister announces to the nation, we need to take it out to the public for parents to be advised and um, uh, to be aware of the pre-medical conditions that their children might have, and such children will be advised to learn from home and uh, will be working with the association for home education to make sure that those learners are supported and they are not lost out of the system and uh, employees will also be advised and we are discussing this one with dbsa to give clear directions as to how we go about this because we've got many teachers who would be uh, 60 and above will need to be advised to, to, to work from home. And the issue of the cloth mask, uh, I've covered that. We are making full provision on that. Uh, sanitizers and uh, stringent, stringent social uh, or physical, dancing, uh, physical uh, distancing measures. Chair, that is the end of my presentation. Um, as I said, uh, there were two parts to this presentation, but I've tried to combine them. I might not be able to stay for the duration of the question and responses because I have to join the minister in, in doing the same presentation to the National Coronavirus Command Council uh, in, a, in a few minutes. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, DG. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much for the for the presentation. Would I'm not sure now. Hello. I'm not sure who is now our host, uh, so that we can identify the hands of members that would want to to 
to question the department or to suggest what, what needs to be done. Um, members must just take note that we are scheduled for two hours for this meeting. So can just our what questions be precise? PCDs? Straight to... When will ECD centers reopen? Gabelo. Mm, 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 uh, Jefferson, my hand is up. Jefferson, my hand is up. And my hand is up. Hand is up And who? Morat Peta. Mari Mari Super we have got, I've got I have got Tembe Kwayo. Tembe Kwayo. I've got 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 Tembe Kwayo. i I've got Muratela, I've got Sukers, I've got Tembe Kwayo, I've got Machesi. I've got Gillion, I've got Honorable Epstein. Honorable Epstein. I've got Chris Epstein. Lutuli. Christian. Honorable. Lut I've got Lutuli. I've got you, King. Yeah. Honorable Dutoy. I've got Dutoy. Bulelo Paha. I've got Paha. Christians. I've got Christians. You've got Christians. Sorry, there, I want to be I've got Villa yeah. I've got Nobo. Bosho. I've got Fandaval. Yeah. No, no. I've got Shadia. Okay. Honorable 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 and I take the first I will I'm going to take the first ten. Can I be the last chair? I'm gonna okay, yes. I'm gonna take the first ten and then after that I'll continue if time allows and if we've gone You'll make the second round. Yes. You'll make the second Can I can I can I can I ask all of you to mute your mic, your microphones. Chairperson, can you give us time allocation so, so that sorry, all of us who are able to raise our views? Chairperson, I yes, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Can we can you switch off your mics? Okay, chair. All right, I've got a suggestion. Can everybody switch off their mics? I have noted Honorable Nchabeleng will be the first speaker, and each speaker is allowed at least two minutes. I'm Straight to the point, please don't greet us. We know you are here. Don't greet, just straight to the point. Raise your, your view, and the, the department will, will, will respond. So officials will take uh, questions uh, related to, to them of the department. I have noted Honorable Chabeleng, and after you, immediately Honorable Murwatsetla, you must get in. And after Murwatsetla, immediately Sukars, you must get in. And immediately Tembekwayo, you get in. And Honorable Machesi, you will get in. In that order, can we try to be precise, Honorable me Members? Honorable Chair, you can take over. Thank you. Um, quickly, a suggestion. It would actually be easier if the person wrote the Hello, am I audible? Yes, Chair, you can proceed. Yes, um, 
Thanks for the presentation, Chair. Uh, I just want to say that um, I don't think we're going to have enough time for everybody to ask questions. So my suggestion. that uh, members should write their questions down and then send them through the committee, the two committee secretaries, and then the questions will be given to the department where they will respond in writing to those questions to all members. Or in the next meeting, those questions will be answered. Thank you very much. My 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 little question is in relation to infrastructure for mm -hmm. COVID. Uh, for being on the responsible after this pandemic so that we don't build structures that we may not need. And I'll suggest that maybe we look at um, rotating schools, maybe let's say like in the past or in Mozambique particularly, let's go to Mozambique, where schools start seven o'clock in the morning and they end at seven in the evening. So children attend according to shifts, they take shifts in attending school. So there'll be grade three, will have four classes in one day or three classes in one day. Um, of course, yeah, maybe we could use even other structures like, uh, you know, churches, including schools that were closed some years ago because of uh, numbers of students. Thank you, Chairperson. Honorable Murwatsesa. Honorable Sukars, can you hear me? Are you chair? Can you hear me? Your call has been placed on hold. I, Please wait. I can hear you, Chair. Can you proceed in the meantime? Okay. Your call has been placed um, on hold. Please wait. Um my question. I have three questions. Um, the first Your call is, has been placed uh, on hold. If the, please wait. If the department can um, please um, provide us with an answer around school. Your call has been um, placed on hold. Uh, please wait. But whose phone is doing that, honorable members? Your call has been placed on hold. Please wait. Can proceed, honorable Sugars. Um, there are schools in, in poor communities that are falling in quintile four and five. We've brought this up um, with the deputy minister in previous meetings. And I know that in the Western Cape, um, the provincial government has actually made um, application for those schools to be moved to quintile three. I need to know whether the department is going to uh, make provision for those schools in terms of protective um, equipment um, like masks and that because the DG indicated that the uh, mask sanitizers and all that is per quintile up until quintile three and I'm concerned about the schools that falls within poor communities that are um, assessed as quintile four and five mm -hmm. that's the one question um, the second question is the 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 DG has referred to international um, um, schools like Sweden, I just want to know our situation is very different. And the concern is that the spread of COVID-19 is going to escalate specifically because we have um, our children and parents that are living with um, immune um, uh, diseases that compromises their immune system like your HIV and TB. Um, have we taken that into consideration that the children that are at risk that are going to return to school are now going to be exposed. Um, that is my second question. And 
Um, then lastly, Chair, just in terms of the dates that the department has now communicated on the presentation, are those dates set or are they, um, are they reviewing the dates? Because there is confusion whether, you know, when school is actually starting. Those are my questions. Honorable uh, Tembekwayo. Uh, can I come in now? Chairperson. Oh, you are back. You are back. Okay. Can you come in, please, straight to the point, Honorable Muratsetla? Great. Madam Chair, let us welcome and appreciate the report. Very important is we can't afford to miss this, and we can only miss this if we miss the timing. And hence, I would say our role as members of the Portfolio Committee is rather to advise the Minister and the Department with regard to the timing of this whole process. And for this reason, I would say, at the same time, very important is the issue of how best we are going to address overcrowding in our schools, which is persistent as we speak. And number three is the issue of how we are best going to address the whole issue of uh, ablution facilities within our schools and water provision. The department has tried to say that, but practically speaking, will that be implementable within our deep rural schools? Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Murat Saitla. Honorable Tembekwayo. Honorable Tembekwayo, are you there? Honorable Machesi? No, I'm available. I'm here. Okay. Can you proceed, Ma? Can I can can I can I speak? Yes, you may. Yes, I, I, I was just saying my first question is based on the nearly 200 schools that have been buggled or vandalized and some of them set alight. Uh, my problem is we haven't received any update on the improvement of those uh, schools, the 183 especially when uh, we think about the what the ddg said of the provision of 400 mobile class group, uh, rooms to say where are these 400 mobile schools going to be um, uh, distributed and how far are they with the repair of the schools that have been buggled if we need to start uh, going to school and then the second one is in connection with the digital transformation vessels accessibility and affordability uh, of the of the instruments by the learners and educators inclusive of the parents as well especially those that are staying in the remote rural areas the connectivity is a problem so what is the department ready to do to provide uh, the connectivity to all the learners, as it was uh, spe specified. And then to continue to say, there are very poor learners who were dependent on the national school's nutrition. Nothing has been said about the provision of uh, food parcels to those poor families, inclusive of the learners. So we haven't been told about it. And uh, the other one is based on the psychological, the psychologists who will be uh, made available uh, to help it during this period. I just would like to know the distribution, how many psychologists or social workers will be uh, made available to individual schools as it may be. So it's very much important uh, uh, to, to, to be uh, for the department to provide us with such information. And what is going to happen to schools if they do not meet the requirements at, uh, as it was said? What will happen to the kids that are attending uh, those schools? 
Will the department be ready to supply all learners in South Africa with the tablet so that they can be able to access whatever the information that is provided? Thank you. Honorable Matesi. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Chair, I just have a couple of questions. Uh, the issue of uh, classrooms, uh, uh, with regards to what we have heard from the department saying that uh, we will have two learners sitting on a desk, on one desk. That uh, contravenes uh, the regulations of 1.2 uh, meter distance. Uh, how are we going to handle that? Because I don't see that happening. Uh, if you have two learners sitting on one desk. And also, um, my other issue is that we are talking about 40 learners in a classroom. Already we know that 40 learners in a classroom as well, it uh, is over and above uh, the requirements according to the regulations. Uh, why have you opted for that? And uh, what is the position of health? Have you had, have you received approval to go ahead with that? And the other thing the department, uh, the department has said, you know, the DG has said that learners are from grade R, I think up to grade four, we receive your masks. But then we have the learners that are going to school on the 6th of May, the grade 12 and the grade seven. What will happen to them? Will they be receiving the masks as well? Uh, what are arrangements uh, uh, on, 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 that, uh, on that view? And also uh, the learners that are at school currently, uh, obviously they are not receiving any education, but there are schools that have been providing uh, some kind of teaching uh, using online and specifically WhatsApp groups. So I just want to find out in terms of the department, um, uh, what, is there a clear directive uh, for teachers on distance, distance learning and uh, if, are they being equipped with the necessary skills? And also, if they are receiving uh, training on distance learning, and also how many learners currently are having, uh, you know, that privilege of um, of uh, of being on a WhatsApp or having some on kind online uh, training, and what has been done to ensure that all the other learners are able to um, to access uh, that, the education online? Because obviously, you know, if you're talking about learners going back to school the end of June, that means that uh, the other learners are basically sitting at home. What, what has been done to ensure that they receive some kind of education? And are they also provided with data? Uh, because, um, you know, the, some learners will obviously need the data. And the other thing is, you know, uh, finally, it's uh, the, the fees. Um, parents are paying fees currently. Uh, you know, some of them they've paid in January. Um, so what happens to, you know, to those, to those um, uh, parents? Because now uh, they're saying that, you know, they're paying for the data. What happens to them, including the ECDs? When are they going to open? And, uh, you know, uh, should they be continuing to pay uh, for the fees when the learners are not really at school? Is there a, a, a provision? Can maybe um, the president make a, a determination on that, please? Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Machesi. Honorable King? Okay, person, um, I'd first like to find out on school nutrition. Um, the minister actually said that school nutrition over by the Department of Social Development. I just wanted to find out what processes was followed. Um, did social development take over school nutrition? And also the regulations that came into play of hot foods. Have that been taken into consideration because we've seen a lot of learners that are out there that are still struggling to access school nutrition. When we talk about learner transport chairperson, we have to keep in mind that most of the transport providers will have to have PPEs available. So are we going to ensure that they come with a clearance certificate to make sure that they are also cleared um, of not contracting the virus for them to easily transport learners? Will they be then budgeted for a double transport because they will not be able to have a full contingent in their taxis when they transport learners? Uh, so I would like to have clarity on that as well. Then when it comes to um, connectivity and data costs, which have already been mentioned, we should also keep in mind that the language of instruction and learning 
is totally different for how a parent would do it. So I would like to find out um, how we're going to get around that. Um, will videos be set up, um, especially in the rural areas where poor connectivity is available, which have already been mentioned by other people. Then, Chairperson, also I've heard what the DG said, but was there a proper needs analysis done on schools as to how many educators actually have underlining um, problems, how many learners have underlining problems? Um, are schools really equipped to open? Um, how soon can they open? Because we can hear all of that, but when you look at provinces like the Eastern Cape and KZN, how feasible will it be for those rural schools to open on time, chairperson. Um, that's all for now, chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Gillian. Honorable Gillian, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm coming. Chairperson, thank okay. you very much. Coming from from the Western Cape Chair and representing the Western Cape province in the in the NCOP, please allow me to give some input that were were, were um asked and communication that I received. Chapters in COVID nineteen will affect provinces unequally and which will compromise the exams as a national one. Chapters are now more than ever, the inequalities within our society is going to test us as a government um, in this country. Now, Chapters and a lot of questions and a lot of um, issues has been raised by community in the Western Cape, and some of the concerns are as follows. The Western Cape at this point in time is the epicenter for COVID-19. We can see, Chairperson, that um, what is happening around us is, is really not assisting us as communities within the Western Cape. Now, certain issues within basic education that has happened before lockdown and before this pandemic has not been resolved. If we look into learner transport, this, um, 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 the overcrowdedness of schools, the infrastructure um, that is happening, and, and, and all other issues in this province. Now, our question, and my question to the committee and to the deputy minister, is can you give us the reassurance that the Western Cape is ready for schools to open, we are concerned about the safety of all communities within this Western Cape. The inequalities has come out to the fore in, uh, um, during this lockdown, especially in this province. It, do you have a monitoring and evaluation team in place? Because if the, uh, um, if the Western Cape is still the epicenter and, and we experience that the rise of infections is very high in our province. Did you take this in, into consideration when you bring out and when you did this presentation? We can't, um, and I want to ask, did you look into the issues, are the planning and everything in place in the Western Cape? And the issues that I referred to that was there before lockdown, has it been resolved? Thank you, Chairperson. Honorable Suela, are you there? Hello, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Chairperson, thank you. Yes, thank you can you. proceed. Okay, thank you for the opportunity. Um, two questions from me. One, the DG said that they had procured 400 classes to date. What is not clear though is how many classes do we need? Additional classes do we need for, for all the schools in order to, to cater for all the learners? Secondly, 
in the event where there will be platooning of schools, will there be transport arrangement for, the, for learners who might live late um, at the end of the school day? And thirdly, the learners who currently are sharing desks, uh, will they be furniture procured for each learner? And will this furniture be available on time when the school reopens? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Suela. I'm now on Honorable Epstein. Honourable members, um, I'd just like to understand what is happening in the ECD sector. When will the ECD sector be sort of uh, um, planned into the timetable? And then secondly, with regards to after school curricular activities, what is going to happen? What, what, what is being made available for those students who require uh, feeding schemes as well as um, uh, child minding during the time that their parents are going to be at, uh, at work? What is going to be put in place for these children, as well as when is the ECD sector um, planned to be opened? Thank you very much, honourable members. Thank you, honourable Epstein. Honourable Lutuli. Can you hear me? Yes, you are audible, honourable member. Can you proceed? Um, thank you, Chair. Uh, since I'm coming from KZN in the NCOP, uh, I would like to know um, how are we going to deal with our communities? Because as it is now, the anxiety and the fear in our communities for taking their kids back to school. And also, um, uh, in our presentation, there were uh, non-negotiable uh, preconditions for the um, reopening of schools. So I would like to know whether our schools are in the process of being um, sanitized and also the EPWPs that are going to be our cleaners and also our screeners. Are they being tested as we speak? Because if those people are not being tested prior to our reopening of schools, that means those people are going to infect our kids because we are not sure whether they are positive or negative. And also, uh, Chairperson, uh, since I come from KZN and we have a lot of schools in our rural areas, uh, the infrastructure is not in the condition to 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 meet all these non-negotiable uh, conditions. What is the department is doing about those schools? Thank you so much. Thank you, Honorable Lutuli. Honorable Malachi, can you hear me? Weep. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, you are audible. You can proceed. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we, uh, I think one of the things that uh, this COVID-19 has showed us is that uh, inequalities uh, are very high. And uh, even in areas like this one, some learners who are from privileged uh, backgrounds were catching up uh, via all kind of uh, learning, whether it's MC or, or, or Zoom. But the most important thing that I want to emphasize as a way forward and as a question is the issue of uh, transportation. And, and I, I heard the DG speaking about uh, those who are using private transportation, they'll be responsible for their own movement and checking. And I think it's very risky because uh, uh, though the same learners are the ones that are going to be in class with those that will be using public transports that will be sanitized and checked. And uh, the drivers will be wearing masks and making sure that each and every learner in the past is wearing gloves and masks. Now, how do we monitor the private transportation? Now, those are areas that I need to check in, but I think as a way forward, I think there must not be any learner that is utilizing private transport. Uh, it must be a transportation that is put in place by uh, the department to make sure that we monitor so that the spread of virus doesn't happen. Another issue that is huge is the issue of the feeding scheme. We know very well that learners queue uh, when they are going to collect their nutri nutritious food at school. Now, uh, how are we going to manage that? Uh, are we going to, to collect food in groups of five? Or how are we going to do that? Because in most cases, this, this virus is spread in queues, because in queues, people push each other. Or, and which systems are we putting in place? Because we know that a lot of our schools have got shortages of staff and security cards. Now, how, how are we going to put in place to make sure that there's a proper one meter 
uh, system in place that is placed to assist the process. Now, those are part of the issues that I wanted to raise, uh, 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 Chair. Thank you, um, Honorable Malaji. Honorable Tutoy, can you hear me? Yes, um, thank you, Chair. Chair, I've been partially covered on the ECD as well as the after-school uh, facilities. I want to know the DBE books from the Department of Basic Education is not available at some schools in the Northwest province. What plan does the department have to ensure that these books are delivered to the schools before the classes commence? Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Tutoy. Honorable Parker, can you hear me? Honorable Parker? Uh, it's Parker, Chair. Um, oh, Parker, Chair my apologies. My apologies, Honorable Member. Can you proceed? <laughs> Accepted. Chairperson, firstly, I want to talk on the issue of dates. I see that the dates are tentative as they are put um, um, on, the, on the report by the DG. But the 6th of May is the first date uh, for learners to go back to school. Now, now I'm worried about the issue of readiness uh, in terms of having all the non-negotiables in place before the 6th of May, because I think it's too soon, and I think that it's too short a notice uh, in terms of preparation. Secondly, Chair, um, there's a online schooling, which I think was mentioned earlier, uh, which is currently underway. But I'm not sure as to what extent is um, our rural schools um, in keeping with that uh, online schooling um, because we do, would not want learners from rural areas to be kind of out of the system thirdly chair in terms of monitoring um, the compliance um, who is going to do the monitoring to see that there's compliance in terms of what the department is putting forward um, and the other one is social distancing. Um, there's transport used by learners, um, which is procured by, by parents. How do you make sure that there's a social distancing? And the fact that children should be a group of five or not more than five um, in schools to keep up with social distancing. How do you monitor that? Who's going to be there to make sure that you are counting one, two, three, four, five? And if it's beyond that, um, then you know must break them up. Because I think that for me, um, the report as presented does not give confidence to parents to be sending their kids to school. Because I see comparison done with Singapore and other countries who have quite a, a less number, a few, uh, in terms of population comparing to ours. Singapore is about 2 million people at most and we have more than 55 million. So how do you do comparison of such? Because I think that comparison should be apples with apples, but as it is, I don't think that we are really ready to send the children to school, because there's a lot of work that needs to be done in sanitation and, and all the provisions that the department has already put, put forward. Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, your mic. Honorable Christians, Hello. Honorable Christians, can you hear me? I can hear you. Thank you very much, Chairperson. My question is around screening, um, screening at schools. Uh, by whom and how often will it be done? Um, surely teachers will not be expected to do such screening, as there is an added risk to these. Uh, teachers and also obviously they haven't received the necessary training to do the screening. Does DBE think that provinces have the capacity in regards to human resources to send trained healthcare staff to each school every single day to do the necessary screening? Um, and if so, can we have that per province and per school? And then my second and last question what is the department's plan with regards to the schools that have been vandalized? Will these schools be ready for learners and staff to return to teaching and learning? And um, obviously, if these schools are not ready, this poses an added risk to all that is involved at the school. Thank you very much, Chairperson. 
Honorable Vilakazi, can you hear me? Honorable Vilakazi? Tatungobo, we are diva. Can I can? Ngiaguzwa, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Can I go on? I can yes. hear you too. Yeah, now, thank you very much. Look, uh, Chairperson, uh, the, my first, very first problem is, is where the DG started. Uh, he, he, he was trying by all means to convince us that it's, it's the right time or it's the right thing to do to open the schools now uh, so that we do not lose a time. We agree with everybody that time is of essence, it's important. But if I were given time to choose between time and life, uh, I would insist that it is better to have life than time. I, I do believe that this was done in a rush. Uh, but uh, having said that, before I continue, Chairperson, I want to also uh, ask that uh, we be given uh, the, 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 the presentations as a matter of agency, uh, simply because uh, we have a duty here to make sure that uh, uh, the, the, the correct thing uh, happens. We have that responsibility. There is the issue of space uh social distancing there is definitely it's it's surprising that all of a sudden the department seem to be having uh all this capacity which i doubt it has uh social distancing is going to be a problem i'm not asking i am saying uh we have classes of 50 to, in average actually most of them are above that divide that uh, accordingly you it, it gives you more than three classes and and we will not have that we have that classes will be uh, supplied in the form of the prefabs and i am saying we are uh, actually exposing the country uh, to a, a serious risk uh we have to prepare for that risk when it happens because immediately the kids go back to school um it, these nice stories will definitely not happen when it comes to the issue of teachers having uh, observed social distance social distancing uh where, where are teachers going to come from we don't have them uh, is the department at least going to uh, maybe try and converse the retired teachers as well uh, to come uh, in, 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 and play a role? Because this is uh, actually a serious matter. And there are schools which are paying school fees. I'm saying it again. They are paying school fees. Uh, uh, is the department going to make sure that under these circumstances, all those learners will be uh, catered for? Because no one at this stage will be expected to uh, to be having money uh, under this uh, serious pandemic. Uh, Chairperson, uh, a lot of things could not be had, like I said, and we are appealing for... Uh, the presentation to be sent. Like the dates, dates were not clear as to uh, when actually, from my side, when actually is schooling starting and it, it, the, 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 the way they are going to be phased in and the examinations and the issue of transport, uh, which has been of course raised, but I want to emphasize the issue of transport that unless there is transport for learners everywhere, in particular the rural schools, uh, we are heading for a serious disaster. Learners are transported uh, by vans in, 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 in the rural areas, and there will be no social distancing. I, I, I want to put it at the, to stop at that, although there are quite a number of points there to raise. It's doubtful whether we are doing the right thing. Honorable Fadevald. Honorable Vilagazi is back, uh, Madam Chair. Okay, Honorable Vilagazi, Honorable Vilagazi, you can proceed. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to ask uh, Madam Chair on the question of nutrition. Um, what is going to happen to learners that are at home compared to those that are going to be in schools? And, in, and the second question is around vulnerabilities. We know that the majority of our communities are black, um, you know, uh, led by women, poor, and some of them are sex workers and migrants and domestic workers uh, who currently are unemployed. And how is this plan going to address the question of equity? And in, in, in terms of inequalities as well, that uh, vulnerable groups find themselves in, in relation to data at home and data in schools. The question of electricity, a number of our communities we know, particularly in rural uh, communities and townships, are struggling at the moment, Madam Chair, in terms of accessing electricity. How are we going to mitigate those factors? The question of food, how is food going to be distributed between those uh, learners who are home and those that are, that are in schools? And the question of gender-based violence, Madam Chair, where we have seen during this lockdown um, our young girls and women who are expected to perform uh, certain chores and carry the burden of caring for their loved ones who are sick, who could possibly be even COVID positive as we speak. How are we going to mitigate the fact that those learners are not left behind and, and, and to deal with the whole question of exclusions? In terms of essential services, Madam Chair, I would like to ask around accessibility of materials of learning like textbooks. Is it possible that uh, we have our textbooks be listed as essential services? I thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Honorable Fadewald. Good morning, colleagues. Uh, Chairperson, let me start off by the first thing, and this is the dates that were set up. I'm, I'm just very, very uh, nervous that the provinces are where the implementation of the plans will happen. Now, can the DG please tell us that all nine provinces are absolutely ready to start next week? If they are not, will the minister tomorrow announce maybe a small postponement? Or, you know, parents and our learners are very um, nervous and very worried um, that they might uh, get COVID-19. So if the schools aren't ready, will they continue? Um, that's a question we get almost every day. And may I also ask, uh, we know that there are interprovincial and intertown uh, traveling uh, prohibiting uh, rules currently. And what will happen to teachers and of course learners that are visited, uh, visiting their parents in different provinces or at caretakers like grandparents, et cetera, what provision was made for that traveling? Um, and we had no indication, DG, on, on hostels. What's happening at our school hostels? Because several of these grades that will start next week, or grade 7 and 12, are indeed uh, also attending to uh, hostels and some of the teachers we know. May I also ask, Chairperson, um, we know that uh, parents, due to financial constraint, cannot afford all the school fees anymore. Will the department look at assisting, uh, for example, uh, SGB posts uh, that we don't lose those teachers? And also under finance, the payment to schools uh, normally by May and November this year, whether the department will look at bringing those payments forward to now to assist schools during this terrible tough times on their finances. And may I also ask um, whether the department is working on, a, on something like a standard operating procedures document? If so, when will it be ready? When will all provinces have it? And when will we and the public be advised uh, what is in it? May I also ask that uh, under finance, that we put more emphasis due to the financial uh, strain of parents again, that we try and get free data for, for every um, learner or student. We must also look at the students at varsity. Chairperson, um, I think there's a lot of duplication on the questions raised. 
But I think it's sad to say, but that the pandemic is now warning us and that we must get our act together in education. We must go back to not more than 40 learners per classroom. We must make sure that our learners have proper desks to sit at and that we must make sure that money meant for infrastructure, water, sanitation is spent appropriately all the time. Thank I will you, have to cut you now. Honorable um, Langa. Madam Chairperson, may I interrupt? Hello? May I interrupt? Chair, you on mute? Who wants to interrupt? Honorable Langa, are you there? So, Chair, let's not have interruptions, please. Let's not have interruptions. Honorable Langa, are you there? Honorable at once? Honorable at once, can you hear me? I am here. There are other issues. Yes, can you, can you proceed, Honorable at once? Can I continue there? Please. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, let me just start with the concerns that I think we have um, experienced during this um, the meeting or the visual meeting. Firstly, this uh, presentation was not audible enough. I don't think uh, our community and parents uh, were, got the message of what the, the, the DG was presenting. But secondly, Chair, also, I think we must take ourselves seriously. Uh, we were aware that uh, this, um, uh, these meetings will be live, and uh, we, we see members wearing caps in a meeting. Uh, I, I think we, we must actually condemn that. It's, it's, not, it's not a proper uh, dress code for, for, for such meetings. Uh, Chairperson, I would like also to agree with most of the, the members that uh, have raised uh, several concerns uh, on the presentations, but uh, the presentation also is, uh, is covering everything that we, the, depart the department is planning to, to do and achieve, you know, and we know that it's not a hundred percent possible. Uh, even before the COVID-19 uh, uh, lockdown, Chairperson, we know we have uh, several challenges of uh, from uh, raising from infrastructure, school nutrition, transportation. You name them, Chair. We 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 are experiencing and and and, and we have uh, raised our concern in some of 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 the reports that we 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 got from the from the department. We interrogated them. We even went for for oversight in Limpopo, and we saw some of, of the schools that were not in, 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 in a good condition. But uh, there's a slide there, Chair, that I want to align myself with that it says that it is always seems impossible until it is, it is done. Uh, Chairperson, my, 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 my concern is uh, on the issue of uh, negotiables. Yeah, the non-negotiables, uh, pardon me, that um, the department must not even bargain with to say if uh, the school is not ready. If the school is not ready, it's not come. Or the safety kit and, and all that, it must not even attempt to open. And the department must uh, you know, demonstrate to us that they will even do a, a physical verification in making sure that uh, uh, schools uh, are in a good shape, are compliant, and everything that is needed to be there is in place. Because if we're not going to do that, Chair, we are going to find ourselves in a, a predicament of a having now to to uh, put uh, the lives of the, the young ones, uh, the teachers, you know, and, and the staff at risk. 
and when they could have been safe at home. So we must make sure that whatever it is that we practice at home, we, it must also be practiced at school. All the safety preca uh, precautions must be practiced and must be on point. So my concern also, or my, my, my clarity uh, to, to the department, it will be on the issue of uh, piloting. I would call it piloting because uh, it, 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 is with, uh, it goes with faces. The, the first phase of having grade 7 and grade uh, 12 uh, resuming uh, classes. Uh, will that be done in all the provinces? That, have, that is the first thing that I wanted to raise, or even in all the schools that have the, 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 two, the two grades. And if the schools are not ready, what is the plan of the department? What is it that they are going to, to do to, to, to make sure that even those kids or learners are not going to be left behind because of uh, those uh, challenges that the school will be facing. Uh, will, is there any uh, second plan or, or, or plan B on making sure that those kids will also be able to catch up uh, a chairperson? But uh, I think but most of the things that has been has been um, addressed, and 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 I think I will pause there. But uh, Chairperson, I, I think we must allow the department to demonstrate to us uh, as a portfolio committee if they are ready. If they are not Chairperson, they must also indicate that uh, we, we, we do not want any uh, uh, lives that will be lost in our, in our hands. Hence, if the President saw it fit that we must go for lockdown so that we care this a, a pandemic or the, 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 the coronavirus chain. So we must not also ourselves find uh, ourselves putting lives of, of innocent people, innocent young uh, future of this uh, country at risk. Uh, we must be sure and we must demonstrate that uh, the schools are ready to be reopened. Uh, I'll pause the chair. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, honorable members. I, I have tried to, to cover all the hands and we are really running out of time now. Um, the presentation is sent to all the members um, as honorable Ngobo has, has asked. And I think we, we need to appreciate the work that he has been done by the department behind the scenes. If the plans are changing, one would just ask the department to be to be to be to communicate you know let's communicate uh, let's make sure that uh, our people know what is happening we are all stressed we do not know um we we never knew that the covid 19 is going to stress us like it is doing now but the reality of the matter, we need to work together. We need to understand that even if our kids go back to school, it is not going to be an easy process. There will be challenges that will be accompanied by, by that. And I think ours will be to support. And as members of, of parliament, what we need to do is to be there on the ground and 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 try to see those those challenges so that we can we can alert the the department dm let me let me hand over to you uh, so that you can start uh, to respond and then you'll hand over to your officials i'm no i'm not sure if the dg is is, is still there or he he left but over to you dm i'm no i'm not sure if the dg is, is, is still there Thank you very much. I don't know whether we have sufficient time that we can take everything to all the officials that are here. Because to me, issues that I, I think are critical, which are raised by members, is that the date of the 6th, is it realistic? And or that the children can go to school. And also one other thing is school nutrition, learner transport, infrastructure, overcrowding, and uh, and, and connectivity in, in, in rural areas. Chair, when the DG started presenting, he indicated that we are going to uh, shrink, not even shrinking, but rework the curriculum on the internal grades, except for grade 12, because grade 12, as we speak, 
papers have been set and papers are ready. So the grade 12 learners, we are going to make sure that we put some extra effort and share. Can I continue? Okay, I don't know if I'm audible, but my I'm not on mute. I'm saying, Chair, uh, on these other grades, we are only going to look at the strategic topics that we cover, all the strategic topics that when they move to the next grade, they at least have the content of the previous grade. Chair, we, we appreciate when I present, uh, I introduced this matter, I said we would love to get guidance from the members. And uh, in the inputs of members, some of the things to me are guiding the department. We cannot say we are presenting a cast and stone uh, plan if the, the members of the portfolio and select committee see some gaps that you cannot go on on this. Like yesterday, after presenting to the social cluster, the social cluster indicated that the date of the 6th is not realistic. So we need to, to change it, which the presentation that I have now, that date is changed, Chair. Uh, but the, the principals and chairpersons of SGPs are reporting on the 4th. They are reporting so that they look at all the things that will be needed when uh, teachers come. So that when teachers come, they must come ready with masks. We don't want to risk, because in this situation where we are, Chair, we don't have to risk lives. And at the same time, we feel as a sector that we need to protect the academic year, because there are those smaller babies that would want to go to grade R next year. And the grade R must shift space to go to grade one and all the grades, but we should not compromise lives. Life is more important than an academic year. That we fully understand as the department. And that's why we say we cannot just sit back and fold our arms. On the issues of infrastructure, Chair, yes, we do have overcrowding in most of our schools, especially in the big cities. Uh, we are saying we are going to use a phase-in approach, which means when only grade 12s in secondary schools come, then it will tell us exactly how many spaces are left for the next grade, because they're not going to come today, then the following day, the next grade come. Then they will come in trenches. And at the same time as they come, we gather experience and we improve on all the preparations that we have, because there can be things that we think we are ready. And when coming practically to school, we find that yeah, there is a, a bit of a challenge, then we'll be working on that. But I'm not saying we are going to be risking the grade 12s and the grade sevens, because as they come, they will have sufficient space, no matter how small a school is. If it's only one grade that is coming, check, then there will be sufficient. And at the same time, there's a question about the 400 mobile classrooms which have been procured. We cannot say now the 400 mobile classrooms are all that we need. Even the schools that are touched, uh, the, 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 the touched one, we are going to submit, give them the mobile classrooms. And if they need five or six for the grade 12s and monitoring the distance, and which answers also the question of the desks. The desks that we're speaking about are not those desks, the single desk. It's a double desk. We are going to monitor the, 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 the space that, and it's not two meters, Chair. I, 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 yes, we need to protect our learners, but Department of Health told us of one meter and 1.5 meter. So when we speak of 1.5 meter, the double desk can be able to uh, uh, cater for, 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 for two learners. But if that does not work, because the department for the readiness is not going to work alone. For the sanitization of the school, of the schools, Department of Health will be there and Department of Health will guide the department and say, no, 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 this school is not ready. That's why the, this plan 
uh, is a plan, but it's not a one size fits all. Uh, and we know that uh, diff situations differ from province to province. Like they were raising a case about Western Cape and 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 and, and Gauteng as epicenters of COVID-19. So we cannot say when the situation does not allow that learners can go to school, then we say, no, go to school. Another issue, the learner transport. Chair, on the issue of learner transport, there is the learner transport that is provided by government. That one, there's no compromise. The parent is responsible for the child from home until the bus stop. Then when the, the, the child comes at the bus stop, when the child enters the bus, then the department takes responsibility. And that's why we say every child must enter a bus with a mask on, and that mask will be provided by the department. We, the, there's a question by Honorable Machesi, which she, she, uh, she didn't get it right when DG presented, because she thinks that DG said we are going to provide masks for grade R to grade 4. No, DG said we are going, the department is going to provide masks from quintile 1 up to quintile 4. Then quintile 5 schools, uh, parents will provide. But if the, 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 the portfolio committee says we must pro, uh, provide for all, that we are going to look at. But at the same time, we are saying because parents in quintile 4 and 5 are responsible for most of the things of the learners, including transport. That's why they, 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 the learners use transport that is arranged by parents. That's why we say parents live in South Africa. They also comply to the rules and regulations of COVID-19 in the country. So we cannot say parents will do their own and put the children uh, in an overload. And as we are going to face it, grade 12s cannot fill the bus. If the bus is full, then we'll have to provide a second bus in the scholar transport. But issues of overcrowding for now and issues of shortage of teachers for now does not come to the picture when we face in grade 12 and grade 7. Because even those teachers that are teaching the other grades will come to school. Yes, I do get a question that teachers do not qualify to screen. But screening, wherever we go in the police stations, I, I, I'm screened by a police officer. And that police officer is not a health official. So our the Department of Health will train our officials, will train our teachers. Those whose learners shall not have come to school, then they shall be trained and the teachers will, will be doing the screening under the supervision of the Department of Health after having been trained by the top. Yes, there's a, a question by Honorable Sukers about uh, the, the, the quintile four and five in, in the Western Cape and some quintile four and five in poor communities. Those ones, we are not working as robots. The departments know, uh, the departments, provincial and the districts and, 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 and DBE, we know the challenges in each and every community. So if we understand that, yes, they are in quintile five, but there is a challenge, we'll come back and sit down and see how do we help. And those who have applied will check the application as to at what level is it, and then it will be approved if they meet all the the, 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 the requirements for being uh, 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 graded as quintile one to three. So quintile one to three on the issues of scholar transport, Honorable Malazi, that is the responsibility of government. So that one is not a question, and uh, we, 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 we will transport the learners. Uh, there's an issue about retired teachers coming in. The presentation here said the COVID-19 regulations said oh, people who are 60 and above should be encouraged to work from home. So we cannot take retired teachers. We are putting them in a risk when we say retired teachers come back to school. Uh, we do have 
teachers that are still not employed at the age of 28, 30 years. And those ones, if really there is a need, they will uh, come on board. Chair, if maybe I make this correction of, 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 of the opening of schools, teachers, uh, the principals and the SMT will be reporting on the 4th to look at, to, to make the schools to be ready and to receive all the COVID-19 uh, 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 sanitizers, uh, uh, etc. Then teachers will report on the 12th to restructure the, on the 11th, to restructure the timetables uh, and look at other things. And those teachers who will not be teaching at the time will be trained. Then learners, the grade 12 and grade uh, 7, they will be going to school on the 18th, according to this plan for now, subject for its approval. Like I'm saying, that it is being presented now to the command center as we are presenting it here to the portfolio committee. So it's a plan that I, I said earlier on that we are doing the processes concurrently. Uh, water and sanitation, that one is a, is a big challenge for the department because most of the rural schools do not have water, especially in the Eastern Cape where there is literally no water and other rural provinces, like the presentation indicated that number one is Eastern Cape followed by KwaZulu Natal, Mpumalanga and Limpopo. We are working with the Department of Water and Sanitation. And the Department of Water, they are uh, calibrating the, 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 the existing boreholes. And where there are no, no boreholes, then they put boreholes. But in some other instances, you find that there is a borehole, but there's no water uh, uh, on the ground. So water tankers are going to be used because the Department of Human Settlement, Water and Sanitation will provide the water tanks. We are working together with them now. They know the needs per, per school per, in the province and in, the, in each district. They know that. That's why we made sure that we, we submit those needs to them so that when they work on their budget, uh, they, our schools also must be catered for. So we believe that on the 18th, when learners come to school, every school will have water, like uh, it, it was indicated here. Chair, there's an issue that is also... Uh, 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 it has always been a concern about school nutrition. We are not saying school nutrition now is being transferred to the Department of Social Development. We have never said that. But the Department of Social, Develop uh, Social Development is responsible for poor communities and poor families. So those learners who benefit from uh, school nutrition are the ones that are clients to the department, whose families are clients to the Department of Social Development. That's why now, as we are locked in, locked down, the, those parents and families, they receive food parcels from the Department of Social Development and other uh, charity organizations. They feed the same learners who receive school nutrition from schools. So there is no way where we can say we'll go and feed learners at home. We don't have, the department does not have that infrastructure that we can cook food at school and carry it and go and feed children. And when we feed this child at home, what about the parents? Because parents will be hungry also. That's why we are working with government and all what the president has said, the 350, the additional to the social grants on children, all those resources are helping the poor families. So that's why we cannot say as a department, we are going to feed children from home. That chair, we, we do not have uh, the, 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 the infrastructure to do that. Then another issue that is a, a, a challenge is, a, is, 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 is our ECD, grade R. And it's a fact that when we looked at grade 12 and grade seven, we did not take grade R into consideration. We thought that grade R will come in as grade one comes to school. But 
the, what members are indicating here that the great R is, 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 is still young. And if the parent now has to go to school, then who will remain with that uh, great R child? Uh, we, we, we fully understand that as a department, we'll go back and work on, on that. Because what we looked at were the private uh, great R facilities, that those ones following all the guidelines and regulations of COVID-19 and working together with the department and checking their areas and monitoring the, the, the physical distance of children, those ones could be allowed to operate. But now we can see that even those grades are uh, in schools, we need to look at it. That's why communication is a continuous thing, Chair. We'll continue communicating with you. That's why we even made what I will regard as a mistake, because we invited the, the, the portfolio committee to a meeting because we felt that we are moving and the portfolio committee at that time, you did not come up with the timetable for meetings. That's why as a department, we ended up inviting the portfolio committee and the select committee to, 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 to for the meeting so that we brief, we don't go a long distance and then you guide us after we have committed a mistake. What the department is taking into consideration is the lives of South Africans. If one child contacts uh, COVID-19 and come home, living with 13 people, you have put all those 13 people in danger. All those things we are looking at, we are not just forcefully wanting to do these things, but at the same time, we have a responsibility of education, of, of educating the nation. So, uh, I believe I've covered most of the, 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 the the questions, though I know, because most of the questions were just a repetition of uh, data. That's why as a department, we are not taking the private online teaching by schools which have resources as teaching is continuing. We are not taking that because those children who are not connected, who do not have those time, that's why we say we are going to rework the, 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 the curriculum that we say, okay, we're going to cover these topics and learners are going to be assessed on these topics. And that's, that's it. We are not going to say hey, all the work that has been done by those schools which have, which, uh, have resources, then we count it and we, we assess all the learners based on that. We know that we, we don't, uh, South Africa is not the same. There are those that are live in affluent areas and there are those who live in deep rural areas. So we cannot disadvantage our children who live in deep rural areas. So we cannot say we're going to buy tablets for each and every learner because that is not going to solve the problem of connectivity. You can have a tablet, but you cannot have a, a data and connectivity, then what will be the use of that? So we are going to teach our children. Our children need teachers. It's a teacher in front of a child. There is no a, a, a device that can replace a teacher. So that's why we are saying, let the children go to school, but we are not forcing, we are working together with all South Africans. We are working together with the portfolio committee, with the select committee, with the social cluster and teacher unions and SGPs. We are working with everybody. Then when this uh, plan is approved, then we go to school. On the 18th, our children are going to school. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, thank you very much, DM. I I take it that she has responded to all the the concerns that were were raised by the by the members. I I I, I want to check with you, Ntaten Chabeleng. Um, is there anything from your side, or because we are 14 minutes behind the schedule? So can I check with you, Chair, yeah, no. if there's anything that you want to raise? No, for me, it's uh, just a salute to all the troops deployed in this vicious combat with uh, COVID-19. Uh, <clears throat> and that just say, let's let the spirit of internationalism 
international solidarity prevail uh, and that we should share information with our neighbors on, on education and development of our children so that we can survive as a region, survive as a continent, and survive as humanity. Our children are our most valuable asset and will do everything in our powers to ensure that our children and ourselves do not perish in this storm. Thank you very much. And um, to the ministerial team, to the minister and the team, we say we take the call from the Second World War battle cry. Tolka Pirot Nyet Nasat. As we move. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, um, we, I, I just want to mention that there are there are stakeholders that uh, really would have wanted to participate here, but we have made it clear that this is a normal portfolio committee and select committee of parliament. It is only members of parliament that participate in these meetings. And uh, with that, then I would request them to send their concerns or questions to my secretary. I will then forward them to the department and they will get uh, to be responded to. But we were just having a normal meeting of parliament, so we are not allowing anyone to participate in this meeting. It is only honorable members of parliament that participate in these meetings. DM, all the best um, with, your, with your plans and all the best with the future. It is our future that you are leading. It is our kids that you are leading. And you, could, you can see if members of parliament are so concerned, what about a layman on the street? What about a, 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 a parent that has got a child that wants to see the child progressing on the streets? That's why I'm saying that um, we, we just need to pray. We just need to understand that we shall overcome. We just need to understand that um, this will also pass. And the, all the best to you and your department. And I have said, like I have said, that we appreciate the work that you have done. We know that you are in our prayers as the department. Our government, we are praying with our government that we get through this period. And the meeting is adjourned. We are 17 minutes behind the schedule. I think we have done very well. Thank you very much. And thank you very much to all the technical team that has been supporting this meeting. Thank you very much, and the meeting is adjourned. Thank you, Chair. All right, then, of course, uh, good afternoon.